Hi, my name is Alex Norton, Research Director at Hyperion Research. Today I'm going to be giving an update on HPC in the cloud. To begin, I want to start with the forecast. Um, now this forecast has not changed since the summer, um, but just to remind everybody, uh, right now we're predicting and projecting a, a HPC cloud market from the perspective of end user spend on cloud resources for running HPC workloads to exceed $11 billion by 2026. Um, this growth, which is a uh, over 17.5% CAGR over those five years, is significantly higher than the on-premises server market and on-premises broader market. Um, within the forecast, what we've seen from studies and talking to end users is that storage specific components or aspects of running workloads in the cloud, like persistent and ephemeral storage, comprise roughly one third of this revenue. Um, whereas, um, and as we'll see later, compute comprises about 60%, and then there's some other factors that um, build into this revenue. On the workload perspective, we're seeing high adoption across all the different applications running the HPC space, but the, the artificial intelligence applications are a high growth driver in this space, um, especially with the access to public data sets or shared data sets, as well as data aggregation tools that exist in the cloud. Uh, looking at the, the broader HPC market, which is the darker blue bars on the bottom, when we add the cloud market and the cloud forecast on top, what we see is that the, the total HPC market, cloud and on-prem, is expected to exceed $50 billion by 2026. Uh, so what's included in that market, just so everyone is on the same page, is the, the cloud revenue, the cloud market that we saw on the previous slide, the on-prem server storage, middleware, software, and maintenance services which is the broader HPC on-prem market. Um, so while the, the cloud market might be a smaller portion of the total HPC market, it is growing at a much faster pace as we saw on the, on the previous slide. Uh, from a recent study, and I alluded to this earlier, we're starting to see a much more granular breakdown of the, the distribution of spend on cloud resources for running HPC workloads. Um, on the left-hand side of this slide, you can see a, a pie chart which breaks down the, the distribution of spend between compute storage, software licenses, and other. Um, that compute portion is roughly 57 or 58% um, from the, the users that we spoke to in this study that we ran um, in the middle of this year. Um, further, we, we asked the users to break out their compute spend between spot and reserved, and then non-accelerated and accelerated instances. Um, and what we see is that between accelerated and non-accelerated, it's a roughly 50-50 breakdown of spend, but the reserved instances together comprise a li larger portion of the compute spend. And that is because partially because they're, they're more expensive, but also as we see users understanding how and where the cloud fits, um, they are trending towards more reserved instances for specific production HPC workloads. Um, another thing we've been tracking, um, and we've talked about this at length in, in previous discussions as well, is the impact that the rise of HPC cloud computing has had on the on-premises ecosystem. Um, in the past, and I think about years like 2018, 2019, the cloud was, was seen as a complementary solution. It was used primarily for bursts during peaks in utilization rates for on-prem systems. Um, however, over the course of the last few years and through multiple large end user studies, what we've seen is that as users are increasing their cloud usage, their on-prem deployments, their on-prem roadmaps are shifting. Um, we see the cloud directly impacting those budgets in some ways. Um, and so what we're seeing as we look forward, um, and we'll talk about this on the next slide as well, is that user sites are looking at cloud as a critical resource next to say an on-prem system. And as they're thinking about their next deployment, they're looking at which workloads can run in the cloud, which workloads would best be run in an on-prem system, and how do they distribute their, their budget, their skill sets, um, and their workloads across platforms and across different resources um, for optimal HPC application running. Um, 
another thing that we're seeing is on the on the skill set size, both both for end users and for IT departments, for sysadmins, for HPC support teams. Um, as they adopt cloud resources, there are new skills and new capabilities that need to be learned and adopted. Um, and as those groups and those people learn these, these new skills, they're able to take more advantage of what the cloud has to offer. Um, as I mentioned, you know, user sites are really looking at the future and how their resources are gonna be allocated. And what we're seeing is that there is not a single uniform solution that spans on-prem and cloud for every user. Um, each site is going to have to, to balance and weigh different, different factors, different things like skill set and budgets and performance requirements and uh, time constraints on running jobs. And as they, they think about all of these factors, ultimately it's going to be an optimization problem around where do I invest money and time in the cloud? What do I optimize my on-prem systems for? And where does that balance fall? Um, and ultimately, each site is going to go have to go through trials and experiments to understand which workloads can run well in the cloud in a cost effective and performant way and which workloads should be the focus of on prem deployments. To close, I, I, I want to share um, something that we're working on internally. Um, we've showed this uh, previously, but what we're trying to describe here is not a market tracking from a dollar perspective yet, but rather different access models for, for running HPC workloads in the cloud. Um, you can see that there are a number of intermediaries or, or companies that sit between a user and a public cloud. But we also see things like colos and industry vertical uh, providers or uh, hosted HPC systems that are different than say the traditional public cloud that we see um, on the far right. Uh, but you, at, what, what this is meant to show in light of the, the previous two slides is that there is not one solution and every user site is going to have to analyze what is best for them. Um, and there are a number of, uh, of, of tools and solutions and services out there to help them run their HPC workloads in a cost effective and, and performant way. We welcome any feedback, questions, comments, anything on, on this or anything that we've talked about today, but this is something we're, we're working on actively and would love feedback from, from the community. So with that, I say thank you. Um, I hope this was informative. And if you have any questions, any comments, you simply want to talk to us, um, I'll leave our emails down here. Alex, I'm on the top, and then Mark is below me. Um, please feel free to drop us a line or uh, grab us while we're at SC. Thank you so much.